Hello and welcome back to Ask Your Pharmacist. We're shining a light here on the amazing work that's being done up and down the UK in pharmacies and the massive difference that can be made by a pharmacist to your life, to your physical health, to your well-being. The series focuses on what you can and perhaps should be doing when you head into your local pharmacist. I'm Mike Young, our expert Suki Basra is alongside me once again, someone who's been working as a pharmacist based in central London for 30 years. In this final episode, we take you behind the counter. We lift the curtain on what happens behind the scenes in the pharmacy, between you handing over a prescription potentially and receiving your medication. Uh, Suki, is there such a thing as a typical day for a pharmacist? Never, there's no. never a typical day. <laughs> I never know what's gonna come through the door. Um, there are some basic foundations that are the same every day, um, which include dispensing prescriptions, finding stock of medicines that are very difficult to find, um, putting stock away, answering the phone, um, resolving queries. Mm. And I think the, the, the majority of the time is taken up with consultations and talking to patients and advising patients, giving them information about their medicines, perhaps calling patients whenever we have a chance about the, those who are on new medicines. So there's something called a new medicine service where if there are a particular range of drugs such as diabetic medication, blood pressure medication, asthma medication, all of those sort of chronic conditions, um, you may find that your pharmacist will just call you up and just make sure you're getting on well with them. There aren't any side effects that you've got concerns with. Making sure high pressure isn't becoming low pressure. Yeah, or too low, or yes. are, you, are you having some symptoms that are, you, or you're not even taking the medicine because you were never sure about why you were meant to take them. So those kind of uh, quandaries we, we deal with all the time. Um, so that there is a general background flow that the whole team sort of knows that we need to achieve in that day. And then there's the um, almost space for the unknown. But it's a team effort. I think what you don't see in the background is that there is a whole team of people that almost dance a dance with an unspoken language, but we all know our role within that dispensary. You, you, you mentioned that team. Mm. I mean, what, what is a typical pharmacy team and what do they do? So within the pharmacy team, you've got your pharmacist, who's your registered clinician, who is at the end of the day, that's where the buck stops. You know, all the safety of the medication and um, how, how something is assessed, it, it's with the pharmacist. But behind that pharmacist is a whole team. There's a pharmacy technician, there's a dispenser, there's a, a counter assistant. So you've got all these different levels of people that are responsible for the cogs in the wheel. So my pharmacy technician is in charge of making sure the stock is there for my, for my medications, um, procuring that stock as quickly as possible, putting it away, making sure all the very odd nuances of medication are kept and not lost, or, or they're checking for discharge summaries and checking those against medication prescriptions that have been received from GPs, making sure they are actually correct, or um, they help with blood pressure monitoring, um, they help with the assistance of getting uh, vaccines prepared. So we're all, all in, the, in the midst of sometimes either a f flu a campaign or a COVID campaign. All of those things need a team behind them to actually make them work. A pharmacist on their own can't make those things work. And more and more so, as pharmacists, we're being asked to do more clinical roles, which means the day-to-day -day within the dispensary needs to be looked after. And that's where the team comes in. The team makes all of those things look very seamless. And, they, and the, a good team doesn't even need to say anything. There's a quiet understanding in the background. Everybody knows where they, they fit, they pick up pieces, they, they get things done, order stock or source those that are out of stock or try to um, communicate with the GP or a nurse or a carer, district nurses. It's amazing the size or the scope at which the community pharmacy works in the background. It's not just that counter. And that growing clinical role that you, you talk about, uh, easing some of the pressure we hope on, on the NHS at the GP level in particular. Um, talk to us about the geography of a pharmacy a, a, and how that's maybe changed. I mean, what, one thing we've talked about in the previous episode is, is that many people might not be aware, but there is a, a private booth, a private room, somewhere where a door can be closed and a confidential medical conversation can take place. Yes. 
So all pharmacies have to have, a registered pharmacy has to have a consultation room which provides private consultation. Whether it be NHS or non-NHS, it's a space, it's a safe space. Community pharmacists are trained for safeguarding issues, so if we notice that something that, that's not right, whether it be with children, whether it be with elderly adults that need to be looked after a bit better, or, or we notice something that's not quite right, we are trained in order to look for those things, and then we can forward those on to the right people. We have links within our groups, whether it be social prescribing, whether it be a local GP practice, we will have a good relationship with those people who are then part of that, we call it a multidisciplinary team. And that means there are multiple disciplines. Someone is a GP, someone is a nurse, someone is a dentist, an optician, a pharmacist, a technician, pharmacy technician. That's a whole scope of different people with different skill sets. And no one is of less value. They all provide a different nuance in that patient's journey. Everybody has a part to play in that patient's journey and they all take those roles very seriously and communicating within each other is really vital. So I, I will meet lots of district nurses and I will communicate with them about things to do with dressings or palliative care or whether a patient is, is sort of lost within the system, um, a social prescriber, a nurse practitioner. All of those are elements that make up a patient care within primary care. So community pharmacy are actually a very pivotal part of primary care. Primary means first port. And I know that we sort of generalise and think primary care is only the GP practice in our mind. That seems to be our focus. But actually primary is where does a patient go first? Mm. And a lot of them sometimes start their journey within the community pharmacy and they may be safety netted and then fed into a GP practice when they're treated but then they come out back to the community pharmacy and that's sort of, it's that cycle, cycle of care. We're at the end of our run of five episodes of this podcast, this Ask Your Pharmacist podcast. If there was a final message that you wanted to put out to somebody who's been watching these, been listening to these, what's that final message, that all important thing that you would like to say? I would say value your community pharmacist. We are a humble, quiet profession working in the background but we provide you so much value within your community. We are a source of clinical information so in order for you to get that accessible information go to your community pharmacist, use your community pharmacist. We'll be able to give you information that's relevant to you, it's contextualised, we can, we, can we can work through that sort of maze of Google information that's out there. We'll be able to make it targeted to what your needs are. We can check your blood pressure when you may not even realise you have high blood pressure. We can provide you with oral contraceptive as, as women so that it's accessible to you. You don't have to wait for an appointment. There's a trained professional out there. We can give advice about asthma. We can give advice about new medicines, adverse reactions that you might be suffering from. You may even not realise. You may have been prescribed something you don't know what it's for. You've got a trained healthcare professional on the high street at your doorstep. You don't need an appointment. You can just walk in and they're there for you. We're there for you. Use us. We are trained. You can trust us and we will be completely con uh, confidential. And I think just don't underestimate there is someone in the communities out there looking out for you. Suki, thank you so much for spending time with us for these recordings. And I do hope that these podcasts have opened your eyes, offered some valuable insights, perhaps even surprised you on the role of a pharmacy and a pharmacist and what that can do for all of our lives. Uh, Ask Your Pharmacist is a Broadcast Revolution production for the National Pharmacy Association.